Hey guys, it's Todd from Like-Minded Lunatics bringing you another drink place swear. This one's never been more special. Here we are getting close to Halloween with my good buddy and writing partner, Mark Griffgroff. Yes! <laughs> Grifford, <laughs> Excuse is me. how it said. No, it's not. That's untrue. I'm excited about this, man. This is the first drink place swear I've ever been on, and I, I could not be more excited. I have to tell people this, that when we started doing uh, Like-Minded Lunatics Online, and I was watching Mark's Friday Night videos, it was so exciting because it was like the old days of high school and, and college when you sit around with a friend and talk music. And the music was the central part of why you were getting together. Hey, let's, let's listen to this new record. But you ended up talking about so much else. Yeah. And that was the memorable part of the evening. So when you had the idea for me to do a game capture thing and to start a video game segment, the whole idea was getting it back to what's it feel like to get together to play games. Here we are finally getting together playing games. So I'm excited. I, I couldn't be more excited. And you know what I'm missing is the intro material where you tell us it's all we do around here. I, 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 I got to have that. All right. Did uh, you have, did, we have to do that. <laughs> all right. Uh, yeah. Uh, so uh, this is a drink place where it's all we do around here. It's all Mark fucking wants me to do around here. Um, and uh, we're so glad uh, you're here. What do we do in Drink Place Swear? Well, it's pretty simple. It's exactly what it sounds like. Uh, have a beverage, uh, play a game, usually a classic one today. A classic in the sense that it's old, but it's... it's uh, well, you'll see. Uh, and uh, <laughs> tell a story along with it. So usually, Mark, I sort of semi-script out a story, okay. and I think about what I want to say, yep. but I wanted to be true to getting together with a friend, hanging out and playing games, where I would call you and say, hey man, you want to come over on Friday? I hooked up the Sega Genesis, and we just get together. And I didn't plan out what am I going to say to my friend when he gets here, but I did have some ideas about the theme, okay. so let me introduce you to the game. Let's I'll do get it. started, and I thought we could just take turns playing it. And then we'll, we'll do a beverage before we start, though. Let's have a beverage. I, you want to do one now? What's the beverage? Okay, so I had one special planned, because we are doing a zombie-based game. Yes, we are playing Samurai Zombie something or other. Okay, so <laughs> I have a special Johnny Walker White Walker whiskey. It was, a, it was a special one that was made for Game of Thrones for the last season. It's better than the last season. In fact, I would say this is the best thing about the last season is this Johnny Walker. Now, I'm accustomed to something like a Jim Beam. Top top shelf. I, I don't have that for us. Okay. That's not uh, that's not what happens in this house. Mm. Uh, so <laughs> we're gonna do we're gonna do a little Johnny Walker folks. Mm. I'm, I'm gonna top that off with a little bit of soda. And uh, we encourage you to get something for yourself. Oh, yeah. So that uh, we can enjoy our drink, and we can enjoy the game, and we can enjoy a little bit of swearing. Dude, hell yeah. Cheers. Drink, play, swear. Cheers, folks. Oh, my God. Ah, that's a good drink. It's a good beverage. That's lights out. That's fantastic. It's smoky. Oh, so good. You know, when I was a kid, I was a cigarette smoker. Uh, me, I, I was too. I quit, mm. but I, I, miss, I miss the smell sometimes. Not of someone who comes in smelling like a cigarette. I can't stand that. That smells awful now. Terrible. Ashtray smells awful. Don't like it. But the fr what you what you call as a smoker, the fresh smoke. Yes. This is fresh smoke. In the back of the throat. Like a good barbecue mm. sauce or some mesquite bacon. Yeah. yeah. All right. Now I'm gonna start and, and just show you the game. Let's do that. And I'm gonna pass it to you. And I, and I want I thought today we could talk a little bit about zombies. Okay. Uh, what we like about zombies, awful movies, good movies, our experiences. Whatever zombie brings to the table. Perfect. And have you played this before? Never. I've never even heard of this. So I have seen folks play it online. So I know it's famous for being strange. Oh. So the idea is here that you are a, a samurai. I like that. Head. You're a large samurai head. Like a Modoc situation? <laughs> yeah, without the accoutrement. Just a head. And you're flying through... The, the face of Bo for you uh, <laughs> Doctor Who fans. And you are trying to save the city. So even though a, a huge decapitated samurai flying through the city shooting fireballs sounds like the villain. Yes. I think you're the hero. Oh. Saving us from zombies. I'm excited. So this, I'm going to enjoy my beverage and I'm going to watch you do this. This came out in 1990 and it's set in the far future 1999. <laughs> I think we all just imagined that we couldn't imagine the year 2000. Wasn't that when RoboCop was also set? A lot of things were. And like all the Mega Man games. Oh, this is terrible. Look at this shit. All the Mega Man games are set in 
199X. I just want to clarify something. Yeah. This is a samurai, correct? Head. And not Wallace Shawn. Because <laughs> I was unclear when I first saw this because right. I feel like he's about to offer me a deal or a, a you know. This is a button smasher, dude. Okay, as far as I can tell, you just hit and you're gonna play in a minute. So is there a story behind this at all? I mean, we could watch the. Or is it just a giant head? Oh, catch that dude! God damn it, Todd! <laughs> so here, here's one thing that's disorienting about this game: is it's like Silver Surfer, in that you don't know what parts of the background affect you and what don't. Yeah. So there are these laser beams that are being projected up. They hurt you. So you can more easily run into the building. I ate him. I, I think. believe you just killed that man. I think I ate him. Maybe he's fuel. Are we the good guys? In Dead. This? And that's not in English. I don't know what that's saying. Here, jump in here. No, that was uh, that was that was that was kanji. Game over. You know, it's not three lives. You know, <laughs> it's, it's done. Done. You did it wrong. I feel like at the beginning of kind of the NES era, mm -hmm. or right towards the end of the Atari era, video games were still created as if they were coin operated yeah where they were trying to steal your quarters but you didn't have any goddamn quarters you bought the whole game so you want to be able to play the whole thing right they were still punishing as if they were trying to steal your quarters yeah yeah and right, you know see. your time in a in an arcade was limited so it was okay because you're like wow that dollar 50 went by so fast on a lucky night five dollar bill Five dollars was a huge deal. Five dollars is like two hours. Your, pot, your little jeans are full of quarters. Jingle jangling. God. All right, here we go. I'm gonna try this, folks. Start telling me about zombies. All right. While I try to. I so know. yeah, yeah hit okay. start and then your B. So this is your health bar at the at the bottom here. So this is how many. There's little versions of your head showing you things, and then this I think is your progress throughout the level. You see? Okay. Yeah. I don't know why you're a man in this. Is there, oh. Damn. Yeah, and watch out for those beams of light. Okay. Oh, yeah. I don't know really who you're trying to kill. Oh, these, these people are... Oh. Yeah. So this is what's confusing is you, you can eliminate, you can destroy the buildings, but you can also just fly right past it. I don't know what the incentive is. Shit, I hit that lasery <laughs> thing. <laughs> so, uh, zombies, you know, one of my first horror movies uh, was Creepshow. And uh, in the the first vignette in Creep Show, fuck me. Yeah, keep going because I just got started. Go ahead. You're gonna have to get good. We're playing this for twenty damn minutes oh at my least. God, yeah, we're like eight minutes into this and we've already <laughs> died four fucking times. I'm having some beverage. This is this is gonna be a real swear episode, Todd. I mean, you want me to get the blood blood pressure cuff? Are you, are you okay? No, I took my med. Mm. Oh, I saved them. <sighs> Zombies, do it. So. Um, it, Creep Show, one of my favorite movies. Um, like my lunatic Ricky just told me he showed his son that movie for the first time. One of my favorite horror movies, but I was so scared because my mom loved horror movies, but no one else in my house did. No one else in my family did. So when my mom found out that I was even a little bit interested, she was taking me to all the horror movies. And so I was seeing movies that were way inappropriate for my age. Saw Creep Show, terrorized. Um, in the Father's Day vignette, like my lunatic Jim, that's his favorite part of that movie. My father's day cake. Um, awful father is brutally murdered by his daughter, and then she comes and visits his grave yearly to sort of apologize and, and drink whiskey. And um, and one one year, I don't know why this year over the other years, he rises out of the grave, a practical uh, wonderland, just frightening looking. Uh, they really did great on that costume. And uh, it terrorized me with fear. My mom was so worried about me after that because I was having like, you know, crazy dreams and like, uh, you know, I'm two years old to be showing me zombies. That's a that's young. Can't even handle like Skeletor yet. Right. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> so um, she tried to get context for it and she rented. I don't know if you remember in those days, like grocery stores had video rental too. Oh yeah, yeah, when you left, uh, so we had like a, a Safeway uh -huh. part, and then it turned into an apple tree. Okay. But at the front of it, there was like a small, everywhere had video rentals. I feel like yeah. that, even gas stations, video rentals. Yes, and uh, some of the grocery stores would be just this shitty cart at the front. Yes. And while your mom was checking out, you'd go run over and see if you wanted a movie. Yes. They didn't have the box art or anything like a fancy blockbuster video or a Hollywood video. Just a photocopy description of the film. Just like the uh, uh, library had, if you ever rented yes. stuff from the library. So um, my mom found a documentary about George A. Romero. Oh, wow. 
and uh, she wanted to show me behind the scenes stuff. And it was one of the first times I ever got, I ever was able to capture uh, the understanding that these movies, these songs I'm listening to, these games I'm playing, these actors, these directors, these people are creating this stuff. That it's a fiction and that you could be a part of it. Do you know what I mean? It was so uh, fascinating to me. You want me to take over for a minute? Yeah, do it. It was so fascinating to me. I got to level two, though. I'm never going to get there. Oh, I can continue. Ah, yeah. Um, it was so fascinating to me that people were creating those. So she showed me this documentary. I didn't look it up ahead of time. But in it, it wasn't the the early zombie movies. It was like one of the later Living Dead movies that they were uh, chronicling them uh, filming. And in it, you got to see a scene where uh, a zombie pulls out somebody's entrails. Ooh. And, uh, and, and it eats them and stuff. And uh, they're showing the scene, and it looks frightening. And then they say, cut, and everyone's laughing. And the guy who's being eaten giggles. And and uh, it con it convinced me that one, zombies weren't real, um, but two, that I wanted to be a part of, of scaring people or of telling stories that affected people, you know? And I think it has a lot to do with with why I like the horror genre so much is that when I watch a scary movie now, I'm not all that scared. Unless it's right. a really good movie. Uh, or it captures my fear or imagination. I am so much worse at this game than you. You did great. Um, it's tough, though. I feel like the, th the reason it's tough is because the enemy fire looks just like your fire. Yeah. And so it's hard to... See, look. That's it's this, reddish. It's the exact same sprite or whatever, and I feel like... So you're is, actively avoiding them hitting you? Yes. Oh, yeah, I'm not doing that. Oh, my God. So, you know, it's funny that you mentioned that because as a kid, I was terrified of all things supernatural. Okay. I was one of these kids that believed every urban legend. Yes. Every myth. Yes. One of my cousins described the Bloody Mary game to me when I was probably, I guess, around four or five. Yes. I was so... I wouldn't look in... To mirrors. I remember crying, not wanting to. Mom would yell at me, "Go, go brush your hair," and I don't look in the mirror because I was so terrified of that. You know, growing up, and I think it, it's hard to like say to admit this to yourself, you know. But I think I was a lot like you in that we were sensitive, and that means like our imaginations were captured easily, and things affected us so much. I had uh, you know cousins and stuff who could watch horror movies and never think about it again. Yes. And I'd be like, yeah, but what about later when we have to go to bed? How are we going to survive this? And they'd be like, huh? and I'd be like, I'm serious, you know. Well, and I remember. I'm awful. You're better at this. I, I you know, I, I stayed with my friend, uh, my friend Shannon and his 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 uh, double cousin Sean. Okay. Their, bro their, their dads were brothers and their moms were sisters. That's it's some the, country stuff. I never heard of double cousin, it's bro. It's the closest you can get to incest without actually being at incest. Sure. Um, but we, I stayed with them and their grandparents all the time. Wow. And, uh, double cousins is just going to reverberate in my brain. I know. And Shannon's grandfather was a uh, traveling salesman. Okay. And what he would do is, is as he was traveling from San, back and forth from San Antonio towards Hillsboro, he would stop at these little VHS stores yeah. and he would buy all the tapes they didn't want. And so Shannon and Sean had, at that time, like in the late 80s, probably, like, I would imagine around 500 tapes. Wow. Of everything. And it was mostly, wow. like, really schlocky stuff that sure. the store couldn't, couldn't you know, Is couldn't this on rent. Betamax or VHS? Yes, VHS. Yeah. VHS. Yeah. And they loved horror films. Yeah. And I remember seeing the first Evil Dead. Oh, nice. And being completely terrified by it. And you look back at it now and it's humorous. It's humorous. I had no idea then. But that, that moment where uh, Shelly turns into the witch and she comes oh. out of the, the <clears throat> out of the basement and it, she's she sped up kinda. And she stabs Linda in the ankle with a pencil. Yes. I remember that moment so viscerally because it didn't affect Sean and Shannon. Like they were still joking. Yeah. But I remember me seeing it and just being absolutely terrified. Yeah. And trying to hide that from them. Oh sure. Like you didn't want to, you didn't want your buddies to see that. No. But then as I got older, I was kind of like you and then I started to I started to understand, okay, these are stories that people are creating. Right. And I started to get into that aspect of it. Right. And then when I was 16, I took a job at the Museum of Horrors. It was a uh, haunted house. If, if any of you are from Central Texas. You, you, you've told me this before. We've never really talked about it. You were a part of a haunted house for a while. 
Yeah, for two seasons. Holy cow. And it was one of those things that kind of changed my life. Because number one, you know, I grew up in a- I want to do that now. It was one of the best <laughs> jobs, the best and worst job I've ever had. Well, sure. So coming from a small, so my, my high school, I graduated 10 people. This was the first place where I encountered real different personalities. Okay. So there were there was a couple of gay folks there. Yeah. There were there were folks that were like bikers that like all, there were all these weird. Yeah. And I'm not saying that gay or bikers are weird. I'm just saying there was a a variety of folks that I would yeah. not who have been exposed to otherwise. I think I think weird is a fine term because you know we all grow up with an idea of what the norm is, and if we decide to deviate from that to be ourselves. That's weird. And it was... <laughs> but it, in a good way. It was so great because I learned to... Number one, I learned that, you know, there are all these other people out there that have so much cool shit to offer. Yeah. But then you learn how to navigate with those folks at a really early age. Right. And and I also learned that horror is a... It's hard work. Yeah. Scaring people is fucking hard work. Well, it's like making people laugh. Yeah. You know, comedy is not easy. I would imagine it's sort of the same. And working the last week of Halloween, so uh, actually it was the last two weeks, we were open every every night from 5 until 1. Wow. Um, I think they stopped the line at midnight, and we would run the house until 1. Wow. And when you first got that job, it's like, oh, this is going to be so great. We scare people. Yeah, but and we get to stay up late, and we scare people. But what you don't realize is that, yeah, you got to scare people even when you're tired, and you've got a cold, and the and we were in a tin building. And somebody has a bad attitude and punches you in the face or something. Oh, my God, yeah. Did you ever get attacked or anything like that? Yep, several times. Really? Yeah. Well, because that's what I imagine as the, one of the pitfalls. So, one of the, okay, so the guy who ran it was a guy named John Anderson. Ooh, I beat a level. Oh, that's nice. We're going to three? We're well, going to three. You, you you keep going. So John had been in the business for his entire life, and he was a creepy, skeevy old guy. Yeah. Um, and he hired, I like him already. And he hired anyone, and he did this thing that was 100% illegal. Okay. <laughs> by Texas Workforce Commission. Okay. He told you what your pay was, and at the end of the night, you got half of it in cash. And then he banked the other half. And if you made it to the end of the season, you got your bank. Uh, to encourage you to go, go through the whole thing so there wasn't high turnover. So he knew that there would be high turnover, and there was, because right. it was a shitty job <laughs> that had no breaks, and you were essentially just, you know, a uh, a human decoration. Right. And Because uh, they didn't have animatronics. <laughs> nothing, no. <laughs> right. Um, but ah, it, it, ah, that ah, last two ah. weeks was so exhausting, because essentially it was like five to, to one, yeah. And you're screaming the entire time. Sure. And one night, uh, or one day, I remember. I remember getting to work, and John was like, hey, "I made this new rig. I need somebody to run this new rig." Yeah. All right, man. What did you What did you make? And he shows us, and at the top of one of the ceilings, he created a rig that would hold you by your waist, and you could lay on the. This ceiling. man's not an engineer, I assume. No, John. <laughs> no, no. The man could barely wipe his ass. He smelled like like. Terrible the entire time. It sounds like that. That um, uh, I'm gonna let you finish, but I just want to say it sounds like that. Uh, there's a documentary about that New Jersey uh, amusement park that was just making roller coasters with no logic. Action park? Yeah, it sounds like Action Park. It's like th that's John, except he has a dirty beard and a cigar, <laughs> and he smells constantly of whiskey and, and coffee. Like I, knew, I got a new rig. I somebody got a... So what you're saying is he, after all, has some redeeming qualities. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, he was a man of culture. <laughs> like, I got a new rig. Somebody needs to test it up. So we get up there, and it's in the ceiling, and it's essentially a harness that allows you to do a reverse sit-up in front of someone's face. Wow. He's like, I, I, what I need is a Freddy. I need a Freddy Krueger up there with a glove, and you're going to swing down in someone's face. Scare somebody. Right Sounds there. fantastic until you understand this is a fucking punching bag. And you're doing it all when you're trapped. And you're doing it all night. You're supposed to swing down into someone's face. Were you Freddy? Fuck no. <laughs> no, my friend Paul was. So Paul gets hooked up and... I'm going to pause it so I can... You're gonna, I'm going to have to have another pour in a second. Okay. Can, can you handle that? 100%. All right. So Paul, first, first thing out of the box. People come through, Paul swings down. Ha ha ha! Yeah. Pop, pop! <laughs> first fucking thing. He's been working on, like... Uh, his wordplay and being clever. Yes, right? he's got his Freddy down. Yeah. Ah By the way, people, if they haven't seen it, should watch that great uh, Monday matchup you just did, the Friday the 13th one. I love that. Elm Street. 
I mean, sorry, Elm Street. Yes, Nightmare on Elm Street. Yeah. Um, I love that. You guys talking about Freddy. And I had never seen either, either of those videos either. You can go over here and watch that, folks. Yeah, and I love Freddy. We had a whole Freddy room. Yes. But I'll tell you this. <laughs> but he's getting punched instead of, yeah. Oh, my God. It, it, immediately, Paul takes it off. Not doing that anymore. Yep. And John's walking around the house as it's open. Need somebody up in the Freddy rig. <laughs> Fuck you, John. He's the most frightening character in the haunted house. Oh, it's terrible. We thought this is a true story. <laughs> so we, there was rumors that, that John liked to frequent Faulkner Lane in Waco. Okay. Those Waco folks know what I'm talking about. That, that, that's where the prostitutes are. Oh, this is Cherry Street in San Antonio. Yeah, 100%. So okay. there was rumors about it. So one night we followed John. Yeah, yeah John liked like the Faulkner girls. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, and his wife was the most lovely, sweet woman. Oh. Dana was fantastic, but nice. John... Garbage. Garbage. 100 be. garbage. But yeah, walking through the house, no air conditioning, no heating. I need somebody to run the Freddy rig. Oh, fuck you. How'd he get there? He'd you know been, what I mean? He'd been doing haunted houses his entire life. Mm. He, had, he actually had a PBS show like Elvira. It was called Sleazy Pops, and he and he showed old <laughs> films. It's not. A, I wish I still had that tape. <laughs> It's not a lie. Sleazy Pop? That was his name then, yeah. And then he, he went by like some kind of weird vampire name at the haunted house. Sure. Garbage human being. It sounds like he at one point had some fun and imagination to him, and he just got like like a carny over time. Oh, he was a 100% carny. Uh, during the summer, he had three fireworks stands. And so during the summer, if you wanted to work with John, you would drive down to Mexico with him. And you would buy fireworks, and then you would drive back up, and he would have you sell them at his fireworks stand. And so we How's were... he convincing you? Just because you need cash? You want gas money and cigarette money? Yeah, because you could do whatever you want. You could show up drunk. John didn't care. Oh, you yeah. Could, you could smoke. There are people smoking weed out behind the thing. No one cared. It's and like, see, then he's I got... just need the Freddy ring. Like, as long as you can run that shit. It's actually a pretty good Freddy. Oh, so, you just did. So that was my haunted house voice. <laughs> my friend Lonnie was in the room next to me, yeah. and, and he would always say, at the first of the night, your voice is terrifying. By the end, it's Hulk Hogan drunk. <laughs> <laughs> and it was. <laughs> One day, uh, Mark and I are going to have to write uh, a, a serial series like The Adventures of Hero Man, and, and when uh, Thomas tried to save... No, when... <laughs> Wade tried to save the world yes. um, about uh, carny wrestlers because I feel like we have a, a passion for both of them. Yeah. And I also do a little bit of a Macho Man Randy say, oh yeah, want a little spice? So I think we could do something. All right, this game sucks, but I loved your story. Uh, and and uh, never play this, but... Uh, this is an absolute garbage game. We've got Wallace Shawn floating around. <laughs> Shooting people with what? I, I mean, I don't even know what these things are. No, no. The worst firework on Fourth of July you could possibly get. And he's also he's killing ci uh, civilians. And the uh, cartridge said Zombie Island. There's no island, and I don't see any zombies. I even wore my zombie shirt for this. <laughs> no fucking zombies. <laughs> All right, well, that's about all we got here today. I mean, I thought it was pretty good. I uh, liked it. Uh, I mean, the the. Uh, game is horrible but being here with you is fantastic so much fun so um could you give us a little pour so we can do the, the, the oh, quick end we here? gotta do it we gotta do a cheers folks again i don't even know if you can get this anymore the johnny walker white walker mm. uh but it is delicious and uh i encourage you to find it. it's better than that last season of game of thrones that was nonsense all right so in between now and the next time we talk to you it's todd and mark See ya.